Well, welcome back to Darren Burke Show. I'm finally back. I'm finally in my new room. Job sorted. New laptop sorted. Bed sorted. So I'm back two weeks now from India. And um, yeah, it was class. And I wanted to do podcast and shit straight away. But uh, just there was a shitload of stuff to do. And I was being a little bit lazy, I suppose, if I'm, if I'm going to be honest. But um, yeah, back now, I, I, I'm after getting a Mac. Uh, which is fucking ridiculous. It's it's like magic compared to the shy computers I've been using all my life. I've always had like hand me down computers, and then even the first time I went and bought an actual computer, I went to Walmart and I was delighted. It was a brand new computer. I went got home and it was like still fucking slow. Like and then I was using that for about seven years. <laughs> it's fucking useless. But um, the Mac now I got this, and it's a second hand one. But um, when you when you click on something that actually just happens straight away it's it's a miracle it's very it's unbelievable so i'm i'm i actually like writing on it i actually like using it um which is nice so i'm getting a lot of work done which is decent uh back doing the comedy as well back we did a crack den comedy yesterday that went uh went perfect we had like 20 tickets sold we had a lot of irish uh from around toronto at it and uh we're going to be keeping going to that so if you see that and you're in toronto definitely um definitely come by to the next one uh we're gonna we're gonna keep trying to build this into a good show so we had a great time last night but yeah so today anyway i'm just gonna i was writing earlier about uh my trip to varanasi in india so i'm just gonna have a little chat about that uh the varanasi is uh it's north india it's about 14 hours from delhi so we got a bus over there um into varanasi it's really hot in varanasi like 40 degrees but uh so we got down to our hotel right on the ganges like absolutely stunning beautiful and uh it's like the city is kind of like something out of game of thrones or something it's like all these built up temples with steps coming down to the river and uh yes yeah, just it's it's absolutely class to look at but what varanasi is known for is basically death so a lot of people people like to go there to die because that's where they that's where they burn the bodies and um and put the remains into the ganges and that's like the best way you could possibly die so a lot of people like to do that but when we got there first we, we knew that this was the case but uh we got there first and we kind of it was like hit home once when we were walking around there's like loads of people loads of like old people that they're on their right really on their last legs on their last hours or days and they because if they know they're going to die, then they make their way up to Varanasi. Because if you die in Varanasi, that you get burned there, and then that's the that's the best possible scenario for Hindus. So we got there, and there's like old people ready to die on the streets. And uh, even then, there was one group of lads, there's about seven lads in their maybe early thirties, and uh, they were just carrying their mate who was dead. Uh, no coffin, no anything, just um, just carrying him down the street. I don't know where to wherever he was going to get burnt. And uh, once we saw that, it was like, oh shit, this is this is actually real stuff, you know. It's not just normal sightseeing, but it, it was it was very cool. We got down into um, we were walking, just walking around, wandering around, having a look around, and that's when when we saw the first bodies actually burning on the right on the river edge. It was like we didn't know where to look like we didn't we didn't know what we we're supposed to do because we wanted to be respectful of everyone but uh we also we hadn't a clue are we supposed to be here are we allowed to do this it felt like you shouldn't be there do you know it's it's a, like a surreal experience but um so a lad came up to us then and he was basically the fella that kind of ran that um that burning gat so he just called us over and it was like we were kind of getting in trouble or something, but he was, it was, it was grand. He was just like, Oh, you're, you're visiting here. Come up, come up here. I'll tell you, I'll tell you about Varanasi. So he brought us up to the top of the temple. We just sat down and watched the, the burnings happening down on the, on the river's edge then. And he just told us about everything that, that happens, uh, with the burnings. Like, so they, when, when the body's burned, they're not, you know, no one's supposed to cry because if you cry, then, you're giving the soul like a reason to stay on earth because you know to look after the person that's sad it's supposed to be like a happy occasion it's supposed to be you're supposed to be rising on to 
to the next life or to to nirvana like um there's if you get burnt in the main gas in i think it's all of varanasi like some of these fucking facts told to me by people on the street and i'm just relaying them but uh so i don't know if i get everything perfectly but um i think in varanasi definitely in um in manikarnika gat if you if you get burnt there then you reach um i think it's called moksha let me just double check that to make sure it's right uh yeah moksha it's called so that's um that's like enlightenment that's on to the next that's heaven basically but because like in india they believe in reincarnation and that's um in sanskrit like sansara is the is what that's called when you say you end one life and then start another life and then it's like just a constant process of starting new lives until you reach this moksha this like full enlightenment when you can go on and um just be in nirvana for forever and that's that's what people want to achieve so if you get burned in this place in varanasi that's that's what you achieve so as your man was telling us anyway this fellow was uh like he said he said he owned the thing I, I don't know if he did or not he could have been living on the streets but he seemed everyone seemed to know him around the place anyway and um then he brought us into the back and uh it was to where the eternal fire was apparently this fire is keep going keeps going for like thousands of years and it hasn't it hasn't gone out since i mean it's possible but uh if i was the one if i was the one waiting by the fire and i fell asleep and it burned out then uh, i wouldn't be telling anyone that they'd be getting out the lighter fairly quickly and uh, starting it up again so i don't know if that happened or i don't know if it's been going on for thousands of years but that's what he brought us to see anyway and then he um he asked us for money he said, uh, "Oh, yeah, can you donate to the to the temple?" And we were we were fine with it. But I gave him like five hundred rupees, which is a decent amount, um, just over a day's wages. And he was like, "Give me, you know, more." And I was like, "Nah, fuck off." Because um, he was he, by he was by the way just helping us. He was by the way like, "Oh, this is um, I'll help you around. This is my city. I just I like seeing tourists here." And then he was true to hand out for money after, which I mean, Westerners to go over have more money, so it's uh it's fair enough that they kind of look for it but uh it can get annoying as well because it just happens every single day but once we we gave him that, that money then and uh he was happy enough after then and, and we got up and uh then he said i'll bring you across to see my other my other friend here so across the way there was this little hut and it was the fella inside it was called uh agori so agoris they uh they worship death uh it's like really strange things that they do they they like meditate on top of dead bodies they like they like to be around death they like to be around the dead bodies all the time they make like little necklaces and jewelry and stuff out of human bones and out of skulls they they even eat they eat flesh as well uh when they say it's like uh to keep you young like it's uh it's like an anti-aging therapy thing eating flesh they say that they only eat the flesh of people that have like donated their bodies to agoris um but then they, they people say all the time they see agoris like taking bodies from the water taking body parts from from the fires and stuff and uh, they do that so this was this was an intense human being like this was it, it was crazy like we were in this just this little his little hut was I don't know, five by five or something. There was two of them inside there just having a, having a chat. And then like looking around the room, there was like shelves with human skulls all, all around the, all around the room, human remains, body, not body parts, but like bones, um, carved into different things. It was, it was wild. Like it was, we were only in there for about five or six minutes and that was enough, but he was, uh, it was cool to see like it what was deadly to see. So we got out of there anyway and uh left your man and uh so we were going to so manikarnika get then we hadn't seen yet so that that was kind of the main thing that we wanted to see that's the main thing you go to see it's the biggest burning get it's the one where you reach moksha everyone wants to be burned there it's like the, the high 
class people who get burnt there and it's uh, it's in the very very busy part um so we were going to that later on in the evening and um somebody somebody had told us somebody that was there a few weeks earlier a friend of mine that, from bristol she had said like make sure you go and get uh bang make sure you get a bang lassie and watch the the arties at night so the arty is just a it's just like a thing it's like a ceremony with music and colors and fire like they used the eternal fire they put it all out on different sticks and then have flags and just like different colored shit happening it's like a nice presentation that goes on for an hour every evening it's just like a, a ceremony every evening so that for bang would actually make a lot of sense but uh, we had seen that the night before as uh, but i i still wanted to get this bang but the bang is uh is like cannabis extract from the cannabis leaf so it's kind of like hash um so it's like resin they smash up the the leaf and make it into a paste and then it's um it's like edible and it, it gets you high as fuck so i i just thought like right she said that we were leaving the next day i want to get this i want to try it and i want to have like this like, spiritual experience down with um with the cremations which was definitely the wrong idea. Like we were, go we were going to go, we were going to get that and go down to see the arty and then go to the burning gat after that was the plan. But we went for a few points instead. So that knocked off like two hours and then we were kind of late. So then eventually got the bang anyway. I was looking for it for ages. We couldn't get the lassie because uh, I was looking for it. I was asking everyone for it. Nobody knew anything. And then eventually we got a fella. He was like, go down there. The next fella said, no, go down there, go down there. So we got to this just hole in the wall, the side of a street, asked your man for it. And he said he didn't have it. And then he was like pointing upstairs. So we went upstairs, chatted to your man that owned a restaurant upstairs. Then he was like, oh, you want that? Yeah, come on down with me. Back to the same fella that sent us upstairs. And he just kind of, he just spoke to him and gave him the nod. I suppose he was probably the boss. And uh, he was like right and just he just whipped up open the towel was right in front of him. That's all he had like in there. So he opened it up and there was just a big tray of these hash balls or bang balls. So I got one of them for like five fifty rupees, which is like seventy cent Canadian or something. And uh so he said half would be half is like a lot. So I ate half and then the other two lads that are with me, they ate a quarter each, which was still a lot. Um, especially for what we were about to do. She said them straight away, made our way over towards uh, the other place, which we hadn't a clue how to get there. This fucking, like Google Maps or whatever, it doesn't, it worked, but like there's so many streets, like it's not on a grid or anything like that. It's just like all windy side streets, tiny little alleyways that cars can't get through, the, like alleys that only one person can walk through at a time. Uh, really cool city, like really, really cool place. But we ate this anyway on the way and then we, asked somebody to drive us down so tuk tuks brought us as far as tuk tuks where i would go then we switched over then we started getting high then we uh we jumped on like a bicycle taxi just like a rickshaw and uh he brought us on another bit and then i was looking at google maps he was bringing us way away and we weren't paying attention or anything so then i was like no we're going here he was like all right i i can't bring you there so someone else fucking turned around and brought us back then we eventually got as far as you can go with um with a bicycle then you had to walk the rest of the way is that now we were we had some crack on the tuk tuk and on the bikes at the start like we were fucking we were yeah we it, it was deadly like we were we were just laughing so much and even we were having we were having good crack with the lads that were that were, that were driving us around it was, it was good crack but he brought us down then to the and that's after that then we just like the the fun highness stopped and we just started being like zonked out and just fucking anxious and like nervous and fucking paranoid so we got to as far as he could bring us anyway and then we started walking and we were confused as fuck like i was kind of leading the walk even though i had no idea where we were going i was trying to look at google maps there's people all over the place there's thousands of people on the streets just all going different directions it was it was a bit wild it was it was too much to be high um in but uh that's the situation we were in so we were like fuck it so we were looking confused and someone actually came to us then someone came over to us and was like oh do you do you need some help and we we're like yeah we're just going down to the 
to Manic Arnica. He was like, oh, I'll, I'll bring you there. And uh, we were like, oh, fuck's sake. Because just everyone wants to kind of help you, but then they know they're going to be, they're going to want money off you at the end. Like, because we knew we could do it our, ourselves, but then we were just like, do you know what, fuck it, yeah, go on, we'll, we'll come with you. And uh, then he kind of started, he was like a professional at doing this shit. He was just at getting people to to like him and go with him and go and buy shit from his family shop or whatever. Just straight away, I went, I needed to get a lighter. So I got a lighter at this shop and then your man, your man gave me back the wrong change. But he sure changed me like 20 rupees, so like maybe 30 cent. And uh, I I saw that he did, but I, I didn't. I was just like, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I, I needed silence right then and there. So I was just like, fuck it, whatever. And I took back the money and then the tour guide started like scolding him and uh, it was like, wrong change, wrong change. And uh, so then he gave me back the money. And your man was like, yeah, good, good for you. And then he was like, come, all right, come on. It was kind of like to get him to, your man was obviously friendly and um, <clears throat> just to kind of, to trust him or whatever, which I, we, I, we did trust him. Like every, everyone's pretty sound over there, but um, they just, they just would like your money. Um, but they'll ask for it. Like, so then we, then we went on and he was like taking turns and stuff. And he was like, Oh, uh, let this way, this is the quickest way. And then he's like, Oh no, I forgot this is closed. So come with me this way. But even though we weren't even going that way, he just did that as a kind of a tactic. He's like, if you weren't with me, you would definitely get lost. I know, I know all the right ways here. Even though it was, it was straight the whole way. The way he was taking us, there was nobody going that way. He was about to bring us that way. And then he turned around. He's like, Oh yeah, it's closed. I forgot. And brought us down. We're like, all right, go on. Um, so we were going, we were going through shit loads of people. He was walking fast as well. The lads were kind of lagging behind. We, this was like, we were getting an intense feeling here of fucking, of we shouldn't be going here this high. Like we shouldn't be going down here. Like so this is wrong. It was our internal, it was on, our internal dialogue it was like, just turn around you stupid cunts. Don't, don't go here. Like this is, this is wrong. They just, we could feel the death in the air and our like, yeah, our our inner selves were like was just telling us like, this is not going to be enjoyable for you lads. This is this is going to be an intense situation. And um, as we got closer and closer, I just got, was getting like a heavier, heavier feeling over me. Just like a feeling of it was really hot as well. I didn't have water, and um, it was just I, I was feeling heavy. I could just feel from my head to my toes, just like a heavy sensation as we were getting closer and closer to this temple, and. Uh, we got to it then and you could kind of see, you could kind of feel the, the more heat from the fires and you could you could see the, the tops of the flames. So he was like, right, when you go in here, you'll, um, you should definitely leave donations with people. They expect you to donate because like people are die people have died and they need help or whatever. We were like, yeah, grand. He said, I'll wait for you out here. Like grand. So he basically just ha ha handed us off to another spoofer that was like, doing the same thing as him, just a friend of his that, that was just at the temple instead. Because you can just go up and wander around yourself, but they made it as if, like, you need a guide the whole way through. You don't, because other people have done it, but we were so fucking high that um, we just couldn't, like, they could have told us anything, and we would have been, like, grand, because we, we, we weren't in the headspace for confrontation. We just couldn't do it. Like So we were just like, yeah, grand, whatever. Next fella brought us up. Then we, we got up. And this was one of the most wild things that i had ever seen really like it was it was in a big castle like a, it was a, a gat a temple but uh it just felt like a kind of a castle out of fucking harry potter or just lord of the ring game of thrones something like that and then uh we were looking down over it and there was like eight places to burn bodies so seven of them were burning high and you could fucking feel the heat off this like the heat was beaten into your into your face while i was already feeling like i wanted to pass out like i i it was it was very intense like and i I was really thinking like there is a possibility i could pass out here i was like meditating in my mind being like you can get through this you can get through this you can get through this i looked at the lad i was trying not to look at the lads i was trying not to catch eye contact with them just in case one of them did something to make me start laughing or something because it was just such a nervous situation like we really felt out of place there we really felt like this is not really where we're not that we're not supposed to be there. It's just it was so so strange to us. It was so strange to us. Tourists go there all the time. But uh so then we were watching this. Your man was giving us like the 
play by play and what what happens and what goes on but we had we had heard most of these stories earlier on or the day before with that other fellow i was talking to you about at the other smaller burning gap so they all have the same kind of spiel so he was given that but i was barely able to concentrate and listen in because i was watching down below it was so hot and they were like they were like trying to get this big body like a big fat guy up onto the onto the thing there was like three of them they had him and they were really struggling getting him up and they kind of put him up and half his body was kind of off the thing and then they were like put him up again it was like it was mad it was just like 10 feet away from us uh and you know i'd never seen anything like this in over here like in ireland or here or in the west like it's just death is very controlled you i mean you you see somebody dead when they die then you know the funeral director comes takes care of everything then you see somebody in a coffin and it's it's you know it's still surreal but it's not it's not like this this is just out in the open like 150 bodies a day get burned here so it's like one body up get rid of the remains um into the ganges then next body up and it's just like there's no there's no boxes or anything you just put the the body up with it with the clothes on or whatever so uh yeah this was and i was really feeling like i was going to pass out here it was just like it was too much it was too intense my mind was going absolutely nuts and then uh so he walked us on anyway we were going to go upstairs to where the eternal fire from this cat was and uh at that point i was like i was done i was like fuck it uh don't, i i actually don't know if i want to go any further uh do you want to just turn around now and then one of the lads that wanted to turn around earlier he was like richie he said uh look, that was one of the most intense things I've ever felt, but we're here now. Like we might as well go on and, and see, um, see the rest of it. So I was like, just kind of compose myself again. I was like, cause I knew it was going to get hotter again upstairs. Cause there was a big, huge fire up there. So I was like, right, come on, let's do it. Uh, went up anyway. And there was people trying to sell us stuff in the meantime as well. There was stuff that you could kind of buy up there and um just trying to avoid eye contact with everybody then he brought us up to the, the big fire and there's like a family that guard that fire so they were there just sitting down around it this was roasting now absolutely roasting right in the face like i actually i felt like my face was kind of burning and it was just too hot there was ash smoke in my face i was like your man was explaining it and then i was just like nah i'm i'm gonna walk over here i'll wait for you over here and i just um i was like this is too intense I just went over and stood a bit away from the fire, but it was cool to see. It was, it was, it was cool to see the, the mentalness of it. Like, and, uh, then eventually he brought us up to the very top, uh, where you can kind of just see an aerial view of down below where we were before. And that was, that was, it was like a cool view as well. But, uh, and he was like, you can take a picture from up here if you want. And I, I just didn't, it just didn't feel right taking a picture of it. Uh, so I just, I think one of the lads might have taken it, taken one, but um, I was like, no, like, that's okay. Th thanks. Like, I'll, I'll remember this one. I'll remember this. But um, there is pictures on the internet of it and whatever, but it's like, it just feels weird taking pictures around death and around where people are mourning, especially when you look so different to everyone else and you're clearly, you're clearly the tourist. You're like, it's like death tourism or something. It, it was weird, but I'm, I'm so glad I went. But then... Um, so then brought us back down anyway we gave him money and uh we gave him, I, I i hadn't gotten changed that day like I, I had just gone to the atm so you get like 500 notes out 500 rupees it's only about eight euro or something but um it's still like it's you, eight euro is like a day you wouldn't spend that in a day over there when on your food and accommodation is about that like so it, it was a lot of money there for me and, and i was broke as well like so I, I was just i was running on credit card money so i didn't want to spend money aimlessly like i just on donations and shit uh but i had no other choice there because i just felt so so much guilt kind of and so much like just guilt for being there and for being so um I was so happy to be alive, kind of. You were kind of seeing the end of the end of life. This is the end of life. This is what happens. I know, like life ends everywhere, but this was just really, really in your face, and um, I just felt very grateful to be alive. So I was like, "Well, money it doesn't really matter, whatever." So here, five hundred to your man, and we got back out. The other fellow was waiting outside there, and this I was shook at this point. Like I was shook to the core. And um, he was like, all right, so are you guys going to come to see my uh, my clothes shop now? He's like, I'm not a tour guide. I just come, you know, I want to help. What I do is sell clothes. Like, 
fuck that. I, you know, I felt bad because he was sound and um, he showed us the way and we kind of, it did make it easier just to have to follow him because other than that, we'd have to ask people questions and shit and it just, it, it weren't in the mind for it. This was, this was a bad idea that night. It was bad, but like I'm, I can talk about it now. So it was, it was a good idea in the long run maybe, but at the time it was, it was definitely the wrong, um, the wrong route to take. But uh, yeah, it, it, we got through it. Then we got we got out, and I was like, "Look, I can't. I'm not going to your shop." He's like, "How far is it?" He's like, "Only about twenty minutes." I was like, "Not a fucking chance. We're definitely going home now. I'm fucking fit to drop." So I said, "Look, let's just pretend I bought a tie in your shop, um, and I paid you five hundred rupees for it." And he was like, "Oh, thank you so much." I was like, "Yeah, sound because five hundred rupees is like more than a day's wages for the like average um, in India. It is it is more than a day's wages." for a lot of people so i gave him that it was like sound we knew how to get back then because we just had to follow the ganges all the way back so gave him that then walked away and um we headed back towards our our gaff none of us it was about a half an hour walk none of us said a word to each other for about 20 minutes i'd say we, did, we didn't even look at each other we were just like we were just walking fast uh just trying to get out of the madness and uh, eventually then we kind of looked at each other and we kind of smiled and uh, we started chatting then and we were like just laughing at the ridiculousness of the situation and how much pain I put them through because it was my it was my uh, idea to get the bang. I, I, they, they, they didn't care, like they didn't, they didn't need it. But then once I was getting it, they were like, I will try it as well. It was fucking intense. We got to another thing then and uh, it was just a little girl with the uh kind of colors like artificial or natural colors she was like come down she was i'd say she was two and a half like she was not definitely not more than three just a, like a baby basically and uh she like dipped her finger into the thing and would put it on our foreheads and um then she put out her her hand for money and it was like mostly 10 rupees people were giving her still i had none of that i all i had was the fucking 500 so i gave her 500 for uh, something that was supposed to be 10 this little girl, her face fucking lit the fuck up. And uh, it was just like, all right, grand. Then we walked on again. The lads were getting food. Uh, we got, got to this place for food while I was waiting for them. I didn't even want anything. I wanted nothing. Just like get me into bed. So we were standing there. And uh, then another little girl came up to us with fucking balloons. Balloons. What would you be doing with balloons? Like, what do you need them for? Not like it, it's in Dollarama. They're 50 cent or something. And uh, over there, she balloons. He only had five hundreds as well, so he gave her five hundred. She handed him three balloons on three sticks, just like something you walk around at a carnival at or something. And uh, then he had to get his food, so he handed them to me. I was like, "No, I'm not taking them." He said, "Just hold them for a minute." So I was standing there like a spare prick, three fucking balloons on a stick, um, just like a fucking beacon. That anyone else that saw me would be like, oh, this fucking retard is handing out money for stupid shit. Let's go and talk to this fucker. So eventually they got their food anyway. I got more people coming up looking for money. And at that point, I was like, nah, money is finished now. The money is the money is over. Uh, we're going home. So I walked a few steps and uh, just threw the balloons. I kind of looked back at the girl. I like, put the balloons at, at the side as if like, you know, thanks very much. But I obviously don't need them sell them some, to some other retard um, and make, make some more money. When when she got that 500, she went back to her family and uh, showed them the 500 and they were like hugging her and kissing her and like, good, good girl, good girl. So it was actually, it was actually very nice. It was actually, um, it was actually lovely after. So we, we didn't, we didn't really care, but, um, but yeah, then, uh, so then we, yeah, we just headed back home and just sat in bed and was like, what the fuck? Did we just go through there but uh but it was unreal it was unreal it was different we learned a lot it was um it was savage and it just um it just gave a nice sense of uh sense of appreciation uh for everything that we have and just being alive in general because like i could go to bed that night wake up the next morning and have another great fantastic day in india so yeah, I just wanted to get, I think that's probably the end. I don't know how long this has been because the other one cut off, but um, yeah, I just wanted to get on, on camera again quick and um, get the feel of it back before I, I start getting into it um, properly. I know I say that every every time, but uh, I will be now. I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying using the Mac and uh, I just did DMT again last night and uh, with 
Gibble. And uh, and it was it was a great it was a great trip. It just kind of re refreshed in my mind what um, the things that matter and uh, the things that matter is is loving each other and enjoying your life and having people around you that you that you like to hang around with. And money has always been abundant, especially you know for a lot of people. I know we we stress about money more than we actually lack money we kind of stress about the fact that we might need money in the future the fact that we mightn't be able to afford something that we need in the future but if you need something if you badly need some you'll fucking go out and get it you'll do whatever you can to get it and um so really it, do, it doesn't actually really exist and uh, maybe that's the dmt talking but i'm going to be rich um i am going to be rich gibbos in the meantime is um He's gonna make us rich soon with meme stocks, so I've uh, I've my hat in that ring as well. It's it's all gonna be good. It's all gonna be fine. Wherever you're watching this from, it's gonna be fine. Somebody broke up with you, it's fine. It's grand. Someone new will come along. It might be a while, and uh, if it is gonna be a while, then fucking make yourself the best person possible, so that you are worthy of them when they come along. You get the love that you deserve. And you get the love that you think you deserve. So make yourself think that you deserve the best. Make yourself think that you deserve the job of your dreams. Make yourself think that you deserve to be able to travel the world. Make yourself think that you deserve to have a life that you love. So, and keep doing that. And once you think it, the universe will respond to that and it'll give you what you want. It will, it will. Just find the thing that you love, put everything into it. And um, yeah, don't stop. If you don't enjoy your job, then quit, literally quit. You're not going to die. You won't. If you do, no, you're not going to. You're actually not going to because you'll get another job and you can get that job back or get an even shittier job, worst case scenario. But at least it's different than the shitty job you already had. If you don't like your life, make a change. Please do. Because, um, and and I, I do I, all the time, all the time I forget the stuff that I say myself. I'm the worst to take my own advice. But um, yeah, enjoy your lives. Travel the world. Do follow your dreams. All right. See you later. That's that's been the Darren Burke show. Love you. Oh yeah, Blue Goba. The um the uh promo code is still around for Blue Goba. It's uh two G one M. I'll I'll put it down there before I post this. Uh for because that's for the other podcast, two gingers, one mic, but it's the same prom same promo code, two G one M, you get ten percent off all psychedelic needs, including DMT, LSD mushrooms mescaline whatever you need all stuff that makes your life better it does i know if you, you don't need them though if you don't need them you can do it all through meditation and yoga and um gaining enlightenment and reading but uh there's a fun way to do it as well so enjoy your lives lads love you all